Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I am super excited to be showing you my very latest how to draw book, The Two Pencil Method. Uh, you can see right here on the front cover my Corgi, Joy. I should say my daughter's Corgi. Can I claim ownership of this dog all to myself? I don't think so. Uh, but yes, the two pencil method, I'm very excited about this because um, it, it brings me full circle to my own childhood. When I was a kid, I remember using books uh, that taught me how to draw, and generally it was pencil drawing that they were focusing on. And little did I know that years later I would have the chance to do my very own book. And uh, my two pencil method is all about using uh, an ordinary writing pencil and a black colored pencil uh, to create uh, images like you've seen in my videos over the years. Uh, but before we get into the interior of the book, I want to come back here and just say a special thank you to two. Uh, fellow artists who helped me out. That's right. Bailey J. put her reputation on the line by uh, giving me a pull quote for the back of the book. And also Will Sliney, a very, very talented uh, Spider-Man comic book artist. you got to check out his work if you haven't seen it before. Um, so big thanks to both of them for helping me out, giving me pull quotes for the back of this book. But let's go ahead and get into the interior. All right, so let's begin with just the uh, opening pages of the book, which feature some of the more advanced uh, lessons, to be honest. Uh, uh, here's one you can see there is a section on portrait illustration. We'll be getting to that later on. Now, wait a minute. This tatami looks awfully familiar. <laughs> I wonder where I took this photo. Uh, but yeah, this is what it's all about, guys. Two pencils. Uh, my theory is this is all you need to make beautiful drawings. An ordinary writing pencil uh, and a black colored pencil. And uh, those of you who've watched my videos, you've seen me uh, talk about this. My whole idea is like, why blow a lot of money on art supplies? Art supplies are notoriously expensive when you really don't need um, uh, expensive uh, art tools to create beautiful work. Now this first lesson is uh, in the uh, simple objects section. I begin with an egg, which I thought was just a good way of getting you started. And you can see this is about as far as I would go with the ordinary uh, pencil before coming in and letting the black colored pencils start to intensify some of these areas of shade. And uh, I do my best to keep it gradual, step by step, showing you how you get uh, from beginning to end. And like I said, you know, the, I used books like this when I was a kid, so it, it's a real thrill for me to, uh, to be able to do one of my own. Now later on in the simple objects uh, section, we come to this one that I thought was kind of fun. Using a carry-out box, like from a, a, a Chinese takeaway restaurant, uh, which again, you know, keeping it simple in terms of there not being a lot of uh, details, but then also helping you little by little learn these uh, techniques of shading that allow you to create a nice final image. And they do enlarge uh, to let you have a really good look. I thought you might like to see the original uh, and see that uh, this reproduction is actually larger than actual size. Uh, compared to how I drew it. But that really allows you to get in there and see uh, all those details. Uh, now, in addition to these step-by-step -step lessons, I have a number of sections that cover certain uh, pencil drawing techniques that I feel are uh, crucial, such as this one, the angle of the pencil, showing you that uh, how uh, holding when the, when the pencil is hitting the paper at a certain angle, you're getting very thin lines, whereas you, when you drop the pencil down low, you'll get more of these uh, smooth shading type of lines. And by combining both the step-by-step lessons with this kind of uh, extra material, I think I'm able to, you know, teach in two different ways. In the second chapter, we move on to still lives, allowing you to uh, get the knowledge of the simple objects and begin to combine that into drawing uh, images that have more than uh, a single object in them. And, you know, still lives, uh, the traditional still lives can strike someone as a little bit boring, and that's why I tried to come up with something a little offbeat for this first one, a baseball inside a wooden box, you know. But again, um, uh, all of this stuff, good training as you're just learning uh, the shading techniques little by little before you can head on to the more advanced stuff. Uh, now, at this point, the book does have some aspects that are uh, maybe a little bit like my book, The Realism Challenge, um, like this metallic objects um, arrangement here, uh, which uh, if, you, if you know the book, The Realism Challenge, I did do a whole section that was on metallic objects. I think it's uh, endlessly fascinating um, the way you can create these illusions, you know, these sort of shiny surface illusions. Uh, in The Realism Challenge, it required watercolors. This time it really is just uh, the two pencils that are working the magic. 
The next uh, sort of supplementary section is one on composition, in which I begin to talk about arranging objects within a frame uh, and your different choices as to where things could go. Uh, certainly um, one of the crucial things that you need to understand when you're uh, learning about, you know, doing pencil drawings and creating something that's maybe worthy of being framed and hanging on the wall. Uh, I wanted to make sure that pretty early on in the book we started to talk about composition. And of course this one leads into the final um, sort of uh, climactic <laughs> lesson of the still life section in which I really challenge you uh, to do something that looks like maybe it could hang in a museum. Uh, the sort of traditional still life with a full background uh, and all the different details. And I do try to zoom in, uh, hope, hopefully this will show up uh, uh, on some of these illustrations so that you can really get a good look at how I'm achieving these effects. You know, I think the, um, the uh, photographs allow you to get in there pretty good. Uh, and as I said, most of these final illustrations are reproduced slightly larger than I did them in real life. Actually, let's see if I can find this one. So here it is. This is the uh, actual drawing here. You can see pretty close uh, to the same size, but maybe just a tiny bit uh, larger in the printed book. This is, sort of gives you that feeling of being able to lean in uh, and look closer and actually see the details of stuff so that you can understand how to uh, reproduce them in your own drawing. The uh, third chapter of the book is all about landscapes, uh, a topic that I never have covered in a how to draw book before and really have only rarely touched on in these YouTube videos. So this was fun for me and uh, at the beginning of each chapter you get a sort of hyper zoomed in uh, version which again gives you one more chance to really see the individual pencil strokes uh, of some of these illustrations. And now I was um, very intent on making sure that there was more than one type of pencil drawing style represented in this book. So for example here we have a lesson on uh, drawing an impressionistic landscape in which uh, I said you know we're not going to be drawing individual leaves and trying to make this look like a photograph. It's going to be a little more like something Monet might have done uh, back in the 19th century where it really is composed more of uh, you know, scribbly looking lines which when built up one upon the other uh, can result in, a, you know, a fairly, um, you know, believable looking landscape illustration. So uh, I'm kind of glad that I was able to uh, do this section on landscapes. It was, it was new for me, it was good for me as an artist really uh, to have to focus on this and uh, kind of up my game <laughs> in terms of landscape drawing. The next uh, topic that I cover in terms of pencil drawing is the speed of the pencil stroke. I was glad I was able to get uh, into this uh, section and used as an example um, one of those portrait illustrations from later in the book. But this shows you, you know, when you are moving the pencil very slowly, you can get this tightly controlled, um, you know, sort of photoreal uh, look. Whereas when you really start to uh, allow that pencil to fly across the page, you get this uh, beauty of line that is born of the speed, really, that the pencil is moving. And uh, uh, by giving these examples and writing at length in each one of these sections, I, ho I hope to call people's attention to these, uh, you know, important core topics related to pencil drawing that will, um, you know, on top of following these lessons, allow you uh, to improve your drawing ability. Now, though I did do the uh, impressionistic version of drawing trees, I thought I wanted to have at least one that focused on drawing, you know, every single branch, every single leaf of a particular tree to help you uh, improve your ability uh, at drawing trees. I certainly have always struggled with drawing trees. I think it's one of the hardest things to draw, just the sheer complexity of it. But uh, this lesson, I think, uh, takes you through in a step-by-step, -step, a uh, kind of a doable way that will allow you to conquer <laughs> the... Uh, a seemingly impossible uh, task of drawing a tree in all its details. The fourth chapter in the book is all about drawing animals. I'm sure it will be one of the more popular chapters. Everyone loves to draw animals. Uh, and I think this two-pencil method is a particularly good one uh, for capturing uh, an animal's fur. And I really do try to show in a step-by-step -step way how you can get there from a uh, sort of furless drawing of a, uh, a kitten, little by little, figuring out the direction of the lines uh, until finally you can uh, get onward uh, to those last steps, uh, what I call the uh, final polishing phase that allows you to get a nice drawing of a kitten done. I thought you might enjoy actually just seeing all of the original art. Let's go ahead and look at them one by one. Uh, we've got the uh, tiger. That uh, is, of, of course, a uh, 
a lesson that I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy following. Uh, just the sheer beauty of, uh, uh, of the patterns of the tiger's uh, fur. And then we've got the wolf. You really can't, can't do a section on animals without doing a drawing of a wolf. Uh, there's that kitten uh, illustration that I did before. And then this, I wanted to do something a little offbeat, so I did one of a uh, lizard. Uh, get the, the reptilian uh, skin pattern in there. Let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so you can see how I achieved that. And uh, then, of course, my dear, dear Corgi, called Joy. <laughs> I just smile every time I look, even if it's a drawing. That cute little Corgi. All right, let's move on to the next chapter. The uh, fifth chapter is on travel sketches. Those of you who've watched my videos, you've probably seen me uh, do these, um, uh, show the uh, Taiwan sketchbooks that I did. Uh, and uh, this one really is following in the footsteps of that type of thing, showing you how you can do these uh, little drawings when you're on vacation somewhere, uh, in addition to just taking photos of things. And this one I think is fairly doable. A Japanese shrine. You know I couldn't get through this book without some reference to Japan. Uh, and this shows you how you get to this certain level with the uh, ordinary writing pencil, and then you can take it uh, to the higher level by adding in the black colored pencil. I don't know if I'm the first person on earth to ever come up with this idea of uh, using these two pencils together, but I'm the first person to do a book on it. <laughs> and that counts for something, don't you think? And here's another one of these topics that I think is pretty important. I called it uh, linear versus nonlinear drawing styles, showing how uh, sometimes you're drawing using almost exclusively lines, as you see right here, and then sometimes you kind of avoid the use of lines, and it's all just shading. Uh, and, you know, of course, there's uh, all the different uh, steps between that where you're combining both the shading and the line work. But uh, I'm glad that I was able to do these extra lessons that kind of call attention uh, to important topics outside of the step-by-step -step, uh, material. And the final chapter in the book is on portraits. Uh, I put it last because I feel like it's one of the most difficult things to do. Um, uh, got real good help here on this first lesson from uh, a very talented comedian and uh, actress uh, in Los Angeles by the name of Vanessa Ragland, who has this uh, adorable uh, son. She takes uh, wonderful photos of him, and so I uh, requested uh, permission from her to use one of those photos. Uh, for the basis of this lesson, and uh, I think everyone out there who loves to draw at one time or another wants to learn how to draw a portrait uh, of a child or of uh, yeah, a friend or even of themselves, and indeed, speaking of uh, drawing a portrait of yourself, I did just that. Later in the chapter, I have a lesson in which I uh, show uh, my own process for doing a self-portrait of yours truly, and uh, the final illustration, <laughs> there he is, guys, the guy talking to you right now. And, the, you know, it's good that the pencil does gray, because my hair is getting pretty gray these days, I'll be honest with you. Uh, so there you go, yeah, good uh, lesson there on self-portrait uh, illustration. If you've ever tried one, you know uh, how challenging it can be, and hopefully this, um, uh, this lesson will give you some good advice in that regard. And the final little uh, topic uh, related to drawing that I cover in the book is uh, on using photo reference. Uh, and I decided to talk at length about that and show the actual photo that I used here of my parents. Big shout out to my mom and dad uh, who uh, allowed me to use this uh, photo to create uh, a lesson immediately preceding this section. I'll go ahead and show it to you now in which I show how you can uh, use a photograph to uh, create a portrait uh, of your loved ones, and that's exactly what I did here. And uh, you can bet I will be sending uh, the original of this illustration to my mom and dad uh, to say thank you to them uh, for helping me out. All my life they've been helping me out, and they definitely helped me out with this book. But uh, I thought it would be a good way of showing that, you know, the uh, 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 portrait fo that is built upon a photo is not an exact copy of the photo. Uh, you are altering little things as you go along uh, to turn it into the, uh, the type of portrait that you want. And, indeed, we've got one more portrait to show you. 
The uh, final lesson in the book is on uh, doing a classical portrait. I have to give a very big shout out to uh, Ingvild Christiansen, who I met in Norway when I attended the Raptus Comics Fest a few years back. And uh, she had this photo that I knew would make a very good uh, basis uh, of a final illustration, really showing uh, how you can uh, focus your skills on, on getting the facial features, drawing the hair, uh, getting the clothing, and so forth. Uh, and you can bet, I will be sending uh, the original illustration to Ingvild uh, as a thank you uh, gift. Uh, here it is. Ingvild, if you're watching, thanks for your patience. I'm going to be sending to the, this to you very soon. And of course, I'm going to do the same uh, for v Vanessa Ragland. I'm going to be sending her the original of this uh, portrait of her son. And uh, that, my friends, brings us to the end of my little video here today. I want to say a very very big thank you to anyone who decides to order this book. There is, of course, a link uh, in the description. And uh, indeed, to anyone who has uh, bought any of my books over the years, I really cannot say thank you enough uh, for your support. Uh, or indeed, if you've just watched my videos, or left a comment, or clicked like, or anything like that. I am always super, super appreciative of your support. But let's go ahead and wind this one down. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon. <laughs>